It's not easy to get inside Venezuela's ailing health system. The government tries hard to keep the cameras out. But doctors brought us into one of the main public hospitals in Caracas, determined that we should see the truth. And this is the reality behind the dream of free treatment for all, an empty promise, staff say, because of government neglect. You get a real insight here into the state of Venezuela's health service. This should be refrigerated and it should be full of insulin. It broke down five years ago and it's never been fixed. And just here at my feet, there's a dead cockroach. The health service in this country is in a state of collapse. Nearby, we found medical waste, including used needles, strewn around. This is one of the showers. Sometimes there's no running water, so relatives have to bring in bottles. Maria shows us where her nephew Luis cooks his food, in the bathroom. Luis is gravely ill with a brain tumour. His family have been keeping him alive by spending all their savings, but he needs more help. I still have to rent the surgical equipment they need for my operation, he says, and buy all the supplies, even the gauze. Every day that passes, he loses a little more of his sight. The hospital can't give the sick much more than a bed. Under President Nicolas Maduro, this is the picture of health. We'll take a look at just how bad things are here. There's mold growing all the way down the wall. We're in the internal medicine department. This is the isolation area. This patient here has lymphoma. The patient here has TB. And we've been told he's receiving absolutely no treatment. So David, who is 20, can only rest and hope. His mother is grateful he's been admitted. Another hospital turned him away because of lack of funds. I'm feeling a little better now, he tells me. I feel relieved. But then he admits he does have some pain. In the bed next door, 21-year-old Carlos, a cancer patient and much-loved only son. His mother, Diana, has just been told he needs a biopsy that she must pay for. It would take her nearly two years to earn the money if she had a job. For dedicated doctors here, like Carlos Prosperi, anguish, frustration and anger at the government. I blame President Maduro, he says. We doctors have to tell the truth. We have to do our best to save our patients. But nowadays we can't. We feel blocked because of the government. Doctor, you've been speaking very bravely, very openly. Isn't there a risk that something could happen to you now because of what you've been telling us? Anyone can be afraid, he says. Of course, I am worried. But I prefer to live in a free country rather than live in oppression and let my patients have nothing. Just outside the door, slabs of raw meat on sale. A discarded scanning machine now serves as somewhere for staff to sit. Doctors in Venezuela say sometimes all they can do is help their patients die, not help them live. Orlegiran, BBC News, Caracas.